good source of um, chance to foster anti-advocates and
Party Complicated Musical Club Quartet. Tap is a pair of rings made of two metal moria, and they actually make them long. Uh, so 100 and tap, 150 tap beats to get them one third away from the ring. So one small handful of rings to go the entire ring. So if you were to just hear the last one, you would think that was the ring. Okay, so it's, it's such a portable clock. Um, it's primarily used for just background and very well, but um, just uh, particularly if you're done, you can nail your foot so happily. Um, set it aside and try to use this brand new feature, which is the Home Computer um, Upgrade. Uh, it's for a source of CPS, or Intel CPS for the Mac OS. Um, and this is interesting too because it's so small. On some brands, you can see that the other small brands that are competing. Things so small, you want to actually cut the size um, in half in some situations. So, an example is this is um, in place of the 17, they call it the one cup and it's just a tiny little bit of a uh, If you use the thick one, it's used for a computer, it's used for a filter and storage. So, I think of it as um, some of those physical materials that um, if you have the board that are just really grainy, um, don't use them enough to actually get the very fine grain stuff. But uh, clicking on tap and bring one half cup of grain, if you notice the difference, these are so small. There's only one half of the cup of grain and two cups of water ready to a boil. You let it simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes. You know, there's some things like sand and stuff on the rice. You can remove all kinds of residue as long as it's not greasy. You can use it as a butter and olive oil or another sport. You can use it to make a little bit of sweeter and just kind of make it like syrup. It's a source of material. Um, now, I ripped this off of the Living Strong website, but they did give something to replace the flour in the recipe with the combination. So, five cups of sorghum flour, which is the English uh, brand that we'll get to, two cups of tough flour, two cups of potato starch, and one cup of tempeh flour. And that, that you can use um, for baking products. Luckily, Vitamin A uh, is not a weed. Plant crop, uh, plant crop was running a weed like flowers. And it is a vegetable. <laughs> you know what it's rich in? The B vitamins, the proteins, the iron. Um, one cup serving of cooked spinach. Sorry about all the, the growth and the caution and all that. Um, but basically, the buckwheat growth is uh, 17 grams of fiber, 68% magnesium requirement, um, which is excellent. 22 grams of protein, which means it's over 16 ounces of protein, which is really good for your users of protein. Buckwheat is double the size of the cooked. Um, and this is where you get a little bit of the appeal. It's roasted buckwheat, it's called asha. It's raw buckwheat that's been roasted. So I read through the first ten minutes and I'm like, why do I have so much information in this recipe? And that's why we have a shish tea and shish tea. Uh, but again, you can do it quick and simple as your rice. You drain it, uh, two cups of water, bring it to a boil, then add the one cup of asha, and it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. And you would do that. You can season it with herbs and spices as a side dish. Um, or you can bake it as well, so it's just added in there. Um, we're going to skip forward because this is a couple you may have even seen. Now, sorghum, uh, last but not least, is one of the five top cereal crops in the world. And along with wheat, oats, corn, and barley, it's an annual grass uh, that's extremely drought-tolerant uh, and popularly used in ample sanitary countries. So it has a lot of uses, and it's rich in sand. <laughs> I think we all know what a rich is. And it's the same thing. The sorghum grain is boiled, forage, uh, grease, and barley in the soup. Um, you can also, I saw it popped twice, which is interesting. Again, um, you can use popcorn. They're just little tiny ones, so you still see it really good. You don't see the mouth going down your neck like those are good. You can you can get creative and put some chili powder or Parmesan cheese to kind of complement the flavor. It's a very neutral flavor. It's probably the reason people don't love it as well because it's just not used for any other crop other than grain products. Um, it is, I guess, a more colored product. Um, so I don't know what product right now would want to be like this with the white, but they usually use it for pancakes and things and muffins and things. Um, and I gave you um, some of the you know, medieval parts of sorghum, tapioca, tapioca and white flour, and then you use thickener. So I'm sure you're putting some on your hands and stuff. Um, sorghum are actually used in bread as well. They use the same kind of like to replace the word wheat or the word sand. They throw those two up together and try to fry and mix up and mix them together. Um, so when you are making a flour, uh, one teaspoon per cup of gluten-free uh, flour from either bread or baking dough recipe. So you can use rice flour. And then it's one half teaspoon per cup of gluten-free flour. Did I say bread? For cooking.
So um, this is a great visual. Everyone teases me. They say, it's not a big enough plate. <laughs> but that's the idea behind it, okay? So this is breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and half your plate is USDA. They've got the Food Guide Pyramid. Everybody's on this. Fill half your plate with fruits and vegetables. And so I have the philosophy, more of the best and less of the rest. And so if you fill half your plate with fruits and veggies, then at least you know you're getting um, – important nutrients and then that way if you eat a whole grain that's not as healthy or if you eat a meat that's not as healthy then you know hey at least I'm at least I'm covering my tracks there so half the plate um, what I usually do in general whether you have diabetes whether you have heart disease whether you have um, you're trying to control your weight there's five food groups on the pyramid so everybody what's what's one grains okay there's one Fruit and vegetables, there's two. Well, three. <laughs> Protein. And what's the other one? Dairy. There we go. Okay, so we have five food groups. So here's how you know if you're eating healthy. You say, okay, for breakfast, I had a gluten-free bagel and cream cheese. How many food groups have I had? Except, where's my three? Nope. I've only had one. Cream cheese is a condiment. doesn't count as dairy. Ah, all right, let's start over. Okay, so I've had half my bagel, and I've topped it with something. What can I top it with to give me a second food group? What's that? Peanut butter. Okay, there's protein. Now, how can I get a third food group in there? Oh, there you go. Now it's a healthy breakfast. Now, instead of having one food group with an enormous amount of carbs, I've now had three food groups before my next meal. So now we've had our dairy, we've had our protein, we've had our carbs. What should we have mid mid morning? Carrot sticks, okay, that's kind of boring, but we can dress it up a little bit, right? All right, so here's a healthy dip I'm going to let you guys in on, and this helps me because I'm not a big raw vegetable fan. It's so easy. You know those Greek yogurt containers that are they're, they're pretty good size? I think they're 32 ounces, I think is what they are. You get a plain Greek yogurt, which is super rich in probiotics and super um, excellent source of protein. It's twice the protein of any other yogurt. And you take one of those, and you take one of those little... Um, Hidden Valley Ranch, which call to make sure that it's gluten free, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, Hidden Valley Ranch, and you mix it, now you've got a healthy ranch dip. So you can do that for ranch dip. Again, just check it, just verify with Hidden Valley Ranch. I get a little sloppy with my own diet. I'm gluten free too, but I'm, um, I'm more lax with myself, unfortunately, <laughs> than I am with my clients. But, um, and then if you were to do a fruit dip, just to kind of encourage fruit, what you can do is you can take one six ounce container, so all of the yolk play are gluten free, um, so Weight Watchers line. You've got a bunch of gluten free, and then you take um, you take the whipped cream cheese, and you just blend it together, and now it's a fruity dip. And if you want it to be a fluffy dip, you take one six ounce container, so any flavor that you want, and you mix it with a container of like a light or low fat um, Cool Whip. And that's a fluffy dip. So those are just some ways to kind of encourage, like, raw fruits and veggies. Um, and they are really tasty. I don't tell my dad because my dad's always like, you're experimenting with healthy stuff. They don't ever let me cook at home because they think I'm, I'm going to give them some gross healthy food. But I just don't tell them it's healthy, and they don't know. But um, so that's some ways to encourage that. Uh, so let's say, give me, a, give me a sample lunch. Let's say we have um, a gluten-free sandwich. What should we put on our gluten-free sandwich? Wild caught salmon, look at you, A++. plus plus. All right, salmon, so that's our, what group is that? Protein, okay. What else do we have with that? Rice, which is what? What group is that? Starch, starch group. All right, what else do we have? So we've got salmon, we've got rice, top salad. There you go. So this is where most people get into problems, why they overdo carbs, is now, when we had the Atkins diet, the reason why it was so successful initially is we were so limited in food sources. All you would eat was meat cheese, right? Well, then now they launched this to all the Atkins of meat and carbs, all kinds of stuff that you could have. Well, the same thing with the gluten free. I mean, we were so limited in what we could eat. Now we can get granola bars, we can get anything we want to that's gluten free. And so what happens is we fall into the same trap that everybody does. So for breakfast, I had a bowl of cereal, and then for mid morning, I'm going to have another granola bar. So I mean carbs, carbs, and carbs. So that's, that's the best way I can tell you to just be 
conscious to know how am I balancing my, my food groups, how am I balancing my meal, that is the healthiest way to know. And usually what I'll do is I'll kind of start the center store first and I'll just get my whole grain type thing. So I'll grab popcorn and, you know, I'll get like my, um, you know, my whole grains. And then when I hit the outside perimeter, I don't want to forget my healthy dairy. So I've got some Greek yogurt, some regular yogurts. I've got my, my fat-free milk. And then I, I hit the, the protein aisle, um, which for Mel, you probably noticed, um, Mel has their natural deli sandwich meats that all mark gluten-free and they're natural, which is a I mean, that's, not, that's a rarity, and they're affordable. Um, but you make sure that you get all five food groups. And I gave you some websites on there, too, mypyramid.gov, where you can actually print off a whole bunch of ideas for your starch group, for your protein group, for your, your dairy group, so that you have some ideas. And what I do is I print each one off, and I go through each week, and I make sure that I change it up. So if last week I did, you know, uh, cereal, next week I'm going to do oatmeal. So I just make sure that I choose a variety of food, and the best way to do it is just have those cheat sheets there. So mypyramid.gov, it tells you you can go into each food group, so you can click on the fruit, it gives you a million fruit ideas. You can click on the vegetables, it gives you a million vegetable ideas. And the same thing for protein, like a lot of times we don't consider some of the different protein sources that we have, but there's a ton out there. In fact, my favorite snack is, um, it's called edamame. You guys familiar with edamame? Yeah, they're those little, they're in the frozen food section, um, and then you can just steam them, or you can just nuke them in the microwave, and they come in the pea pods, they're just uh, soybeans, they come in the pea pod, and you just, like, eat them right out of the pot, <laughs> but they're really tasty, and they're super um, rich in all kinds of phytonutrients, and protein, um, and fiber, and they're low calorie, um, so there's a lot of different options that you can choose. Uh, are there any questions so far? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's uh dairy is a tough one. I mean you think gluten you can do rice milk, you can do almond milk. Um Yeah, those would count. Those would count as dairy substitutes, yeah. Because what they do soy milk, um, I believe you're safe with, with soy milk, almond milk, rice milk, yes. Yeah, I had to speak to a, a little kids group one on a dairy allergy, and that was not fun. <laughs> there's a lot that you can't have, um, but yeah, there's there's plenty of options. And the nice thing is, when they do like a dairy alternative, they'll add the nutrients in there that you need. So they'll add things that you would typically get from milk. So they'll add the calcium, the vitamin D, and all of that. So yeah. Oh, the tofuti or to is that how it's tofuti? Oh, so delicious. What is it called? What kind of ice cream is it? Huh. I'll have to look for that. I'm not I'm not familiar with that one. So yeah, those are good questions because a lot of times the gluten allergies go with some other allergies as well and dairy common. So, um, any other questions, guys? I, I left out some stuff, but these are um, USDA guidelines, and it just gives general tips about how to play, choosing colorful fruits and vegetables, um, you know, making sure that you incorporate fiber throughout the day. Uh, it, it, do you guys know an interesting fact about fiber? It's, it's, um, can you have too much fiber? You can, you can, and it can actually interfere with the absorption of nutrients. So um, the best way to do it is make sure that you just incorporate a little bit of fiber with every meal. So um, God bless them, the Fiber One cereals that they have. They're like 14 grams of fiber in just half a cup. My gosh, that's half your day's worth of fiber. So, you know, don't go crazy with that stuff. Maybe a quarter cup and, and mix some other stuff in there. But, um but yeah, those aren't gluten-free, but I, they have some gluten-free examples of that where they, they're starting to go. Sometimes they, they find something and they just jump on the bandwagon and go just a little nuts with it. But, but yeah, you can have too much fiber, but the idea is just everything in moderation, just spreading it out throughout the day. Um, any other questions? Anything we can cover? All right, well, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. You, I'll be around, so if you have questions and you just want to answer for everybody else, I'll stick around and talk to you. Yeah. Yeah.
Yes. 